welcome back to Community Connections. And as I mentioned, Dr. Seville is here to join us and we're gonna talk about vaping. Yes. So we in Pinellas County Schools are introducing a new policy and we already had a tobacco policy, but now we're finding because the cases have spiked for, for vaping that we needed a school board policy. My fear is that people see it as punishment and not education. So what types of things do you say to families if they find their children are vaping? What advice do you have for parents? Well, we kind of look at it two ways. I mean, you can talk about the laws. We do know that a law has changed just last month that makes it illegal to have any of these substances when you are under 21 years of age. Mm -hmm. But we want to talk to people about the dangers of vaping that we believe is infinitely worse than even smoking cigarettes. Right. And cigarettes may be the most horrible invention ever mm -hmm. for people's health. And so we want parents to intervene very soon and with a great deal of authority. Because I sometimes believe that 10% of our patients between the ages of 13 and 18 in the practice are vaping. And sometimes parents believe, well, it's not as bad as some of the other things they can do. Mm -hmm. There are people who say, well, they're not smoking pot or they're not doing this. So we let them vape. But the truth is, not just because of the vaping associated deaths recently, but because of the addictive compounds that are just going to lead them into another gateway drug situation that is making it much more likely they'll seek out something much stronger than the solutions in those vaping pens and the other apparatus. Right, exactly. And we don't really know what's in the vaping pen. That is a very good point. Mm. Yeah, there's absolutely very no, there's no regulation at all. No. I mean, what's interesting, and of course, I'm sure you would imagine this to be the case, somehow the smoking rates amongst teens had gone down when, mm -hmm. after telling people for 2,000 years <laughs> that it was killing them, and the companies who were uh, processing tobacco and making cigarettes, we know the names of them, right. were losing some money. So when vaping became popular, whether they were involved initially, you'll now find that the companies making the apparatus and that which goes in them 92% are owned by the same companies that make cigarettes. Whether they're doing it in a shell company with some kind of a fake name and you have to really look and find out, or out there in the open. Mm -hmm. And of course we know there's nicotine and other compounds in there, just like cigarettes, right. to make you keep coming back for more. Mm -hmm. But they found a great situation here because, you know, we used to say that tobacco smelled and no one liked it. Well, now they're adding fruit smells and flavors and everybody thinks it's just candy when in essence it's 10 times more dangerous because of the chemicals. And the parents need to be made aware of that. And the sooner we can let the kids understand what could potentially happen in a bad way, the better off we will all be. Right. And that's why the education piece is so critical. Absolutely. So now we're gonna take some questions from our students at Largo High School. That's wonderful. And Kamari is our first student. So Kamari, do you have a question for Dr. Seville? Yes, I was just wondering what are the exact effects on my friends because they like to vape just for the flavors and say that there's no THC or nicotine in them and I'm a little concerned about that and just want to know. Kamari, thank you so much for participating today and asking a wonderful question. You bring up a lot of great points. You know, society for some reason has decided it will tolerate vaping more than cigarette smoking because of the smell. It isn't as offensive. People smell something that smells like a perfume or like a fruit, and people look the other way. So let's talk about the fact that you mentioned nicotine. You bet there's nicotine in all vaping solutions and other compounds that we do and don't yet understand because there'd be no reason for a company to make such products without putting something in there which makes you come back for more. So the more you vape, the more you will want to vape. That's how the companies keep making money. And again, it's the companies responsible for all the cigarettes over the years that are making 92% of all these products today. And as for not having marijuana, is it really a great thing just because there isn't THC in there, it's okay to do when there's been so many people die and we know that the compounds in here are not regulated, the things that you are breathing in are potentially exceedingly dangerous for your present and future health. So I want you to educate yourself, but I have a feeling maybe you're the kind of person who doesn't vape and you're just trying to help your friends. This is one of those times I think peer pressure is something that we need. To step in front of your friends and say, hey, this doesn't smell as bad as the cigarettes you were smoking last year, but I know that I like you as a person and I want you to be alive for a long time. So please do yourself a favor and find some other habit that doesn't have lifelong complications to yourself and to those around you. Kamari, it was an awesome question. We could talk about it for a long time, but I hope this opens a dialogue for you and your friends to make some good decisions. 
Thank you for participating. Kara, do you have a question for Dr. Seville? Yes, um, if cigarettes and vaping are so dangerous, why are they still legal? Karen, another fantastic question. And again, it was nice of you to take the time to talk with me today and to help your fellow students. Well, first of all, a law changed last December, not even a month ago, that made it illegal to sell, possess, or use any of the products of which you are speaking when you are less than 21 years of age. So essentially, no one in high school or other schools should have any of these products. So you ask about why they aren't illegal. Well, I ask you, why aren't cigarettes illegal? You know, people who make items that are very addictive and addicting stand to make millions and even billions of dollars, and they have very strong voices in Washington and other places. And you can imagine how difficult it is in a country that was founded on personal freedoms to change law that takes those personal freedoms away. People have known me for a long time on these videos, and you might see, maybe I should eat a little less. Nobody has made it illegal for carbohydrates to be ingested in the amounts I do. I wish they had, and maybe I'd stop. So we all do things that might not be the best for us. But what I can tell you is it is illegal to use at your age, but beyond that, it's the horrible chemicals in there that are addictive and addicting that can lead to lifelong use of not only these products, but also as a gateway drug for things much stronger. Never starting vaping would be the best choice of all. So it isn't just because it's not illegal for adults, even if it is illegal for people your age, but because it's the wrong thing to do and it can lead to a lifetime that is shortened or one that has health problems throughout. It was nice of you to ask the question, Karen. I hope this starts a dialogue with your friends and other people where you can help them to make better decisions about their own lives. Thank you. Delaney, do you have a question for Dr. Seville? Uh, yes, I do. Um, so my dad vapes frequently and um, I'm worried about his health. Is there any way I can help him? Delaney, you see, this is one of my favorite topics, to be honest with you. Uh, I always tell people that one of the reasons I learned to eat fast, which is bad for your health, is that when I was a kid, my parents always smoked as soon as they were done eating. And so we'd rush through dinner as quickly as we could because it made us so nauseous that we learned how to eat fast. And sadly, I have that habit today. So let's talk about something. You know, in theory, people have children because they want to take care of them and they guide you throughout your life and then eventually reach the point when you're living your own life. But we often forget that as children, we can have, a, have an impact in our own homes that can change the health of our parents. And after all, most of us would like our moms and dads to be around for a long time. At least we feel that way most of the time. So who knows why your dad does vape, but you can take the information you learned here from us today about the dangers and bring it back and have an open discussion at the dinner table because you care. And I'm not against saying things to your dad like, you know, I wonder if you'll be around one day to see my children, dad, because I think if you keep vaping, maybe that chance is less. A few tears might be shed, but you're saying something accurate and there's nothing wrong with pulling at dad's heartstrings. Remember, as you get older, remember the man that helped raise you and make you into the person you are. Use that line to him and say, listen, you made me into a strong person. Now I'm going to tell you something. We all want to be healthier. I want you around a long time. So never think you can't get in your dad's face so he can make a better decision. And you can make kind of a pact together. You promise not to do things, and he promises as well. I think that's the way a family dynamic should work. And I think it can make a big difference and help train you on how to be a mom one day to take care of your own kids. And you'd hope they'd come to you if they thought you were done, doing something wrong one day as well. What a great question. Opens up a whole series of things to talk about. Have a dialogue at home with your dad and your whole family. It could change lives, especially his. Delaney, thank you so much again for participating. Super question. Nadav, do you have a question for Dr. Seville? I do. Um, what is vaping-associated lung injury? And if I vape, does that mean I'm going to get it? Nadav, this is a very, very important topic, and I'm glad you brought it up. You know, we talk about cigarettes increasing the risk of cancer and emphysema and all that. And we talk about vaping, having nicotine and other solutions in, uh, chemicals in the vaping solution to make you addicted. But we never really saw with cigarettes people who smoked one time or a second time and then just died. 
But we're seeing this with vaping, first of all, because we don't really know what's in the solution. It isn't regulated. Cigarettes took decades to be regulated, and they weren't regulated to do away with them. They were regulated because the government saw an opportunity to make some money in taxes. It didn't do anything but raise the cost, and now some people don't smoke because of it. But vaping solutions are relatively affordable by most people. But they contain things like lipids or fats or other things that can get into our lung tissue and cause an immediate allergic response. Now, the number of people who have died instantly or in a couple of days after vaping isn't that high of a percentage, obviously a high number compared to those who vape. But it is definitely something which is becoming more common. And why is that? Well, it's because there's a lot of money to be made and a lot more companies are jumping into the fray and making their own devices and solutions that go in them, trying to get your money. So in a time when things aren't regulated, there's nothing being done to make sure that the things that we use to vape are at all safe for anyone of any age. And think about the fact that some people would use those solutions and not end up dying, but their kids might, or the younger kids in the house, or pets, or anybody else associated. This more than anything else, even though we are in the infancy of learning about it and we're not sure all the things that are causing it, should be the reason why people put down their vape pens and other devices and stop in the first place. This should be a sign from above or whatever you choose to believe that vaping is bad. It can lead to death and disease amongst people, no matter how fruity it smells or how amazing it seems or how much society has decided to look the other way. Look straight at it. Don't start the habit and tell your friends not to. I hope this has started a dialogue with you and I hope that it will change a few lives. And the questions that I've answered today, even if one person stops vaping or one person chooses to not start, that'd be something. But I hope the impact is far greater than that. Sadly, of course, I'm sure we'll discuss this subject again. And when we finally get a hold of what's going on with vaping and the numbers go down, I'm sure these companies will invent the next great thing that makes money and brings about untimely death and shortened lifespans. But today we deal with the vaping, and I hope you'll help me make a difference with others. Thanks so much for taking part in this discussion, and I hope it has made some difference to you, because talking with you has made a lot of difference to me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tafil. It's always so educational for myself and I know our audience, we appreciate your expertise. And I think the, the truly heartfelt responses to each of the individual students, so thank you. Well, it matters to all of us and, and I hope you know how much it means to me that the school, you know, the system here is the best in the country, I feel. I've been honored to practice for 30 years and how much you care about the kids more than just in the education process. I'm honored to sit here in this chair and have these discussions as often as you would like. And I know we're changing lives and helping the people to make better decisions. I think we are. Thank you. It's been an honor. And join us next time on Community Connections.